Hello folks, um, just want to do a weekly update on our progress on how things are going. Um, it's been a, quite a weird week this week. Um, starting to feel the, uh, feel the, um, how do I say, just starting to feel exhausted, maybe is the best way to put it. Um, you know, the season has been, we've been at it for, oh gosh, it has to have been a month now. I don't even know, I'm starting to lose track of days. Um, but yeah, having about two, three days a week of having to get up four o'clock in the morning, harvest, wash greens, and, uh, uh, then work a full-time job, um, and in the off time going to markets and, and such is, oh man, I'm, I'm enjoying the exhaustion, I must say, because I, it's all good, you know, if I wasn't busy, if we weren't busy, I should say, um, you know, that would be a bad thing, right? So... The fact that we're busy and we're constantly doing something and we're, you know, building new stuff and money is coming into the business. I mean, you know, it's not not enough to, to pay ourselves yet, but I don't, I don't think that's going to happen for a while. You know, I, I, when we set out this, I figured it could take a couple of years to get a paycheck. You know, I don't, I don't know. Maybe maybe this winter we'll be able to pay ourselves, but. I don't know, money's still coming in. We're busy and busy and busy, so that's good. Um, so I'm not going to complain about being tired, but I am tired. Um, so far this week, uh, last update, I showed you the brooder box uh, that has been completed. And uh, uh, we got chicks, so I don't know. Um, I think I showed you it last week, but I'll show you the progress of how they're doing this week. Um, they're growing a lot, uh, especially the... Ones we picked up last week, they're over there. They're having a great time. They've got a lot of feathers on them, very active. They're bullies. Uh, we put those guys in with each other for the first uh, couple hours and they were just picking on the little ones so we had to separate them. I'm gonna give those little ones a little bit more time to uh, grow up. One of those little ones is, uh, she's not doing as well as the one that's up and standing, the one that's kind of in the corner over there. She, she's, uh, I think she's struggling. So, you know, we'll have to see how she does. Um, I think she was struggling from the minute we picked her up till, till now. She's just not as active. She doesn't have much energy. Um, but, you know, hey, I've never, knock on wood, I've never lost a chick yet. So, I hope, you know, it, I hope that nothing happens, but if I lose one, I think I'm probably due for it. Um, but, uh, yeah, so chicks are doing really good. Um, we started doing a fermented feed this week. Um, I don't know. Let's see if you can see in there. But that's a little bit leftovers of our ferment that we've been feeding our, our adult birds. We fed a little bit to the chicks, and uh, I think they're eating it, so... Um, that's good. Uh, the ferment is going to be good for them. They um, can get better nutrient absorption. Uh, it's easier to digest. Uh, and it's supposed to stretch, stretch the feed dollar. Um, I'm not sure I'm seeing that feed dollar get stretched yet, but we'll find out when we start uh, looking at our monthly bills and uh, monthly feed bills. Probably take a month or two to figure that out, but... Um, one thing that I noticed right off the bat is within 24 hours the, the feed had expanded and it keeps expanding and um, so that may may help uh, stretch the feed bill or stretch you stretch our dollar um, you know um, what else what else can I think of this week so much has been going on uh, we finally got a set up with the Homer farmers market um, which is really cool for us. Um, it's just kind of been a dream uh, to be a, to be a farmer, I guess. Uh, be a be a be a vendor at the farmers market, and I don't know. Some things just kind of fell into place, and I don't know how or what or what what to call it, but it just it's just good. Um, I don't know if it's higher power, whatever you want to call it, but you know, some uh, there was a last minute booth cancellation and. Uh, we were able to slip into a into a provisional. We haven't. We are already a provisional um, year vendor, 
it's not normally something that they do usually you got to do um you know you got to call in every week and all that but i think that with someone else backing out um and we've i think that we've been doing pretty good and we've been developing a reputation for you know being at market on time and reliable and um having having good product so um and that you know we work we were at the wild berry wild emporium and spent about a month there so um it's good I, it's just it's i'm just overwhelmed uh, my wife's overwhelmed she's in taking a nap right now she, she deserved it she deserves a nap you know, it was kind of nice not having to go to the emporium this week uh we, we sold out of greens before we even got to market. That's mostly because the restaurants bought a lot, and uh, we only had a couple lights um, for that harvest. Um, now we've got the six lights going, double the production of what we had before. So, um, and we planted our biggest yielders. It's pretty much our plan for farmers market is to push, you know, sangle radish. Um, sunflower shoots, uh, red kale, broccoli, you know, stuff that's uh, very reliable, um, very uh, high yielding and uh, profitable. I mean, got to do stuff that uh, makes money and uh, has a quick, you know, for, for instance, with the radish, you know, you got a 10 day growing period. The sunflower can be done in about 10 to 12 days. Red kale and broccoli, that's, that's a solid 14 day year, but um that's just kind of where we're looking at looking at it and the way to go forward and to try to get some revenue going and expand the farm you know let's grow the stuff that we know sells number one all of those sell really well um yields a lot and uh it's the best bang for our buck you know we're gonna keep growing arugula um but i don't know if that's going to be a product that we're going to offer the farmer's market just because it's it it takes up the same amount of space as as uh, radish and we're limited on space so probably just like any other farmer we're limited on what we can grow and um but the problem with it is that it 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 only yields about a quarter of the amount that the radish grow radish can produce this costs the same amount, um, quarter of the yield of the radish. You know, we had to raise our prices on it for that for that very reason. Um, but it just it just, it just doesn't make much business sense other than to offer it to, you know, a couple restaurants or something like that. So, but uh, you know, as we grow and uh, expand our farm, we'll see what we can do. Um, I got some seeds to pick up this week. Uh, well, I probably won't be able to get to them until next week, but I got some basil coming. Um, wife and I are really uh, looking into um, making pesto uh, with uh, microgreens. Um, that's something we can do year round, and it's a commodity that uh, I think is going to be a big seller, honestly. Uh, I love pesto. I know a lot of people in this town love pesto. And the prices that they're charging at the store for pesto or just basil, period, is, is pretty expensive. So it appears to me that it's a high-value crop. Um, probably going to take a lot longer to grow than some of the other microgreens. But I don't know. We got a few tricks up our sleeve um, in terms of the, the pesto project. And uh, I think that... Uh, it's going to be a big seller once we get there. My wife's been perfecting her recipe, and it's turned out really good. Um, but to do the pesto, um, we're going to have to have a DEC kitchen for sure. We may be able to rent out, you know, a kitchen somewhere here in town. And, uh, you know, when it's time to harvest, we'll harvest up all our greens and then take it in and then wash them up and clean them up real good and then make our, uh, um, make our pesto. But... Uh, we're gonna need a lot of garlic from other farmers, so that if there's other farmers out there that can, uh, that wants to talk to us about uh, this, is probably gonna happen for a while. But um, we'll we'll see how the uh, the basil microgreens grow. Um, if they if they do really well and it's something that's got a quick turnaround in terms of growing, then we'll probably start pesto this year. If not, we're just gonna do like our in our high tunnel project. We'll do lots and lots of just basil. 
So, um, but yeah, that's what we're up to. That's what's been going on. Um, been letting the girls out a little bit in this little fence here. Uh, every once in a while when we have a chance. Uh, just letting them free range a little bit. I want to give them more space, but, uh, you know, stuff like that costs money. And we're on a limited budget, and you know, little bit by little bit, we can get there. So, um, anyways, guys, I'm going to close this off for this week. Um, really excited about going to Farmer's Market. It's pretty much a dream come true for us, and uh, really looking forward to being part of the farm community in Homer. Um, it's a big deal for us. Um, and... Uh, if you want to stay stay updated with what we're what we got going on, um, just hit the subscribe button and the bell. Um, the, if you hit the bell next to the subscribe button, it'll notify you every time a new video is uploaded. Uh, it's kind of nice when you want to when you want to stay in the now. Um, but uh, we'll leave it off and we'll let Toll Alejandro do his thing. Hey, buddy, he's gonna attack the phone. Oh no, here he goes. Okay, okay. Have a great one, guys.